Um, and there's randomly been the possibility of an Anzac team made up of a combination of Kiwis, Aussies playing against the Lions in 2025. What do you make of that as a prospect? That would be incredible. Of uh, even when I was playing in New Zealand, we uh, would always talk about the Lions tour, and uh, we used to always have this comment: "How come they get to combine a team and we don't have one down here?" Nice. And we always thought of uh, having a Springboks, Aussie, and All Blacks. Um, uh, version of the Lions it'd be awesome to have the test every couple of years or four years um, no if there's any possibility of that forming uh, I'll definitely be a supporter you're not going to come out of retirement though throw your hat and learn to play it <laughs> no sounded <chance>. like it <laughs> man I think it'd be huge for for the game especially in Australia it, it will create like a, a lot of buzz because the buzz around rugby right now is um sort of dwindling a little bit, uh, in, especially in Australia, because, you know, obviously the, the, there are five major sports that we're very competitive in and and the talent pool obviously seems to pick uh, a lot of the other sports. So creating something like that where you're getting the best of Australia, the best of New Zealand, playing against the best of Europe, like that, that'll sell tickets anywhere. They'll sell tickets to Mars. You know, like that's that'd be awesome. What I'd like to see is uh the Pacific Isles hey. team back. That would be mm. unreal. And like uh, um I, I think just because there's a lot of um European based Pacific Islander players now. So they they already have that attraction with the fans up on this side of the world. Having a Pacific Isles team that are tall play against like the European sides I reckon it'll sell tickets everywhere that was one of the games that I looked forward to the most so I played it again for Scotland played against the Pacific Island team at Murrayfield and I was so pumped to play in it because I'd grown up watching Sitaveni Sivivatu and all these legends wearing this jersey and that was a chance to play against so I agree with you 100% as well if logistically it's easy and you can pull a team together like a Babas team but make it a PI's team for Autumn Internationals or whatever it is and there's a drip down effect economically as well to help out Pacific nations. It's a no brainer. It's amazing. If we can sell out stadiums and do it, it's amazing. But in terms of a player playing against it, there was almost no more frightening team to play against because all the best athletes <laughs> in the world are in that one team. And then you've got to rock up and play against them. So in terms of incitement, excitement factor as a player and as a fan, I don't think there's any other apart from maybe a hybrid of the South African, New Zealand, Aussie nations, I don't think there's any more exciting prospect of a team. And Jerome's not coming out of retirement, but we've got an Australia, New Zealand combined team and we've got a Pacific Island team. And Joe's putting his hand up for both, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know about that. Again, I'll probably be fifth in line for, <laughs> for um, <laughs> both sides. I'll but now I'll have to be water boy or something. Yeah. <laughs> Get on the door. Yeah. I'll come for the social aspect, I guess. Yeah. I'll come lead the charge there. And since we've got you both and we're on this subject, right, we've got Coach Kano as one selector. Joe, not a coach yet, but a very experienced selector in the other corner. We've got a New Zealand-Australia combined 15 Oof. at the moment. How many players from New Zealand? How many players from Australia? <laughs> Chuck some names around. Go. Oh, well, Rico Yuan has got to start at centre for me. Yeah. He's... Like, I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't been World Rugby Player of the Year. He's been nominated a couple of times, but hasn't won. Yeah. Um, he's got to be starting 13 for me. I'll go Adi Savia, Michael Hooper. I'll let either the forwards and I'll try and figure out the backs. Give us the other one in that back row, Jerome. At the moment, I'll go Harry Wilson, Adi Savia, Michael Hooper. Uh, Akira Ioane on the bench. Uh, Locks, I would go Rory Arnold, Sam Whitelock. Mm. Great. Um, Slipper. Um, oh, Cody Taylor. And uh, Daniela Tupou. That's a great forward pack. I mean, I would go... Aaron Smith, Richie Moanga, uh, you could flip a coin between Tate McDermott and Nick White on the bench. Um, 
you know, they're, they're both quality halfbacks. Then you would probably would go, I'd go Hunter Paisami, Rico Ioane in the centres. Jordy Barrett at fullback. Tom Wright on one wing. And Caleb Clark on the other. Seems pretty decent, Johnny. Beasts. <laughs> like, That's a good team. Like, yeah. But this is off the top of our head. We need, we need like to give us time. Oh, yeah. But I, I've we left Gordon Barrett out of the starting lineup. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, he's, <laughs> he's won two World Rugby Player of the Years, and I've left him out of the starting lineup. Like, he could easily be at 10. Then you got Damian McKenzie, who could be at fullback. We did put you on the spot. We'll give you a couple of meetings in beer. It's a couple yeah. of coach meetings, yeah. selector meetings. You'll be fine. And also, like, especially with the talent available now, like you imagine you had that team lining up against the Pacific Island team. Mm. Like, never mind the British British lines, but if you could get that composite team to sell tickets in the Southern Hemisphere or anywhere as a spectacle or take it to America for a spectacle game and sell tickets and spread the word of the game, yeah. it might be insane. Um, so we can do our PI team next week. I mean, we'll that lineup would be what Sammy Rodriguez at 13 versus Rico Ioane. That's they're Oof. probably the two most exciting 13s. 